In this video, we will make our first modeling exercise and we will model a cup. So we did mod model a cup already. And if here I open uh, here what we did together, here we had a cup. OK, good. So if I make a focus on it uh, and I go into edit mode now, we can see how it looks and uh, how we did that and the result of the booleans that we did create for that. So booleans create uh, sometimes, let's say, bad geometry. Uh, when you keep it like that, it's still OK. And you don't have to change anything. But if you want, for example, to make a nice, a nice smooth surface here, OK, that is not sharp. And if you would like to change that, for example, by adding a modifier subdivision surface, you can see that it will be an entire mess and it will not work at all because of all the angles that uh, that uh, the Boolean operations did create. So what we will do, we will create a new file here. I will enable just the shortcuts for you and we will start to create this into edit mode with the good rules to can uh, manage any uh, smoothing by subdivision after. Okay, so let's select everything, remove everything and we will add a cylinder. This cylinder in front view and into orthographic view, numpad, numpad 1 and 5, we will go into edit mode with tab and with GZ1, we will just put here the cylinder already on the ground like this. Then with Alt left click, we will select here the top and with GZ1, we will just put this there. So we will have an object that has, that is three meters high like this okay good so now we will start to model so we will make a es like this we will have we will have here a thickness so you can still manage the thickness with s after if you want okay and then after you will make an e and go inside but you can see that you cannot really see what's happening here and you would like the thickness to be somewhere here, let's say. So let's go in front view and into wireframe mode to see a little what we do. And with GZ, we will manage that. Good. So now we have our thickness here and we are happy with that. So it will be the body, the base of the body of our cup. Now let's model the handle. So to model the handle, we will add with Shift A another object inside the object. This object will be a torus. And this torus, we will manage the options of the torus here. So we would like something more or less low poly uh, without too much polygon. So I will show you the example with six, but you can do it with A2 and I will show you both examples. So here we will take maybe something like 24. It should be enough for, yeah, for this. And the minor segment, this one is important, and we will take six. So something really low poly like that. Good. And now in front view, numpad one, I will make a air x 90 degrees. And with G, I will have my object there. Now in transparency mode, so in wireframe mode with Z, I will deselect everything with A and select only that part there. Okay. And then with X, I will remove the faces. And now I will have my two objects, the body and the handle. It's not really two objects, two geometries because, because it's inside one object. Okay. Then with L, I will can select here the linked vertices. And with G, I will can place an S. I will can place my handle where I want into my cup. So let's say somewhere here. I let, I let a little space between the two by purpose. And now we can see that 
if I come back in solid mode and turn around the model, uh, we can see that if I want to uh, join the two geometries here, I will need more geometry into my body, okay? Because for now, I have uh, only these two big faces, and if I remove it, okay, if I remove these faces, uh, it's absolutely not possible to join the geometry like that, okay? So, we will add some geometry, and for this, we will go into front view, and with Control R, or here the tool to add the loops but control air works well control air one click and you still can move it and second click you validate the action again control air one click you move it and second click and again control air and again control air good the, the goal is to be in front of the the top of the of the handle here and now you have the possibility to select these two faces there and we will go into faces selection mode so i will select these two and i will remove them and now into edges selection selection i will just make an alt left click and uh, this I would like more a kind of circular shape, let's say. So we have an option for that. The right click, loop tools, circle. But maybe I would like something that is not completely a circle, but between a little with less influence. So let's say we will go into something like, like that, near 50%. And like this, we will have the hole ready to take the handle. And we will make exactly the same. So with three face selection, select, select, remove with X, and now with two edges selection, alt left click, and right click, loop tools, circle. Normally it, it should take the last influence so you don't have to move that. Good. So now to close the geometry between the two, you have the difficult way. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. So it's good. And it's a good training if you want to turn around your object, your object and make some selections. It, it's always a good training anyway. But we have the alt left click, shift alt left click and right click loop tools bridge. And it makes everything directly. Good. So let's say now you have eight vertices or 10 vertices here. Okay. So what you will do in that case, if you have 10 vertices, you will just add here a loop tool there with control air, uh, a, a loop here, sorry, with control air. And if you have 10 vertices, you will add two. And if you have 12 vertices, you will add three or maybe just one and remove those two faces that it will create there. Okay. And then after create a circular shape. So it depends how many vertices you have there. Okay. But here between this loop here and this loop here, it has to be the same number always. Okay. So right click loop tools bridge just to show you how it works for other possibilities. And the same here. So Alt left click, shift alt left click, right click, loop tools, bridge. Good. And now we have everything. And you can notice that now if we go into edit mode, into object mode, and that we go there with the modifier subdivision surface, the subdivision works pretty well, at least better than the other. And we will do even better because we can see here we have a strange uh, a strange smoothing and here on the top we have sharp uh, sharp edges here that we could manage after strange shape there so how to manage that we will just remove the subdivision surface for now and go into edit mode again good and uh, we will take this loop with alt left click uh, to manage this and to have a good let's say a uh, subdivision here and a good smoothing there. We will do, just do ES, okay? And a ES again, a GZ, and a ES again, 
okay after an angle always let if you have a, here a big uh, angle on there you have to let here uh, another extrusion okay so the same form here if you have an angle here make an extrude es and let this like that good and now for the sharpness of the angles uh, we can manage this with the control B, the bevel. Okay, so let's take here the top to make something that will not cut the lips. And for that, we will just go there and select the two loops here with shift, uh, shift, alt, left click. And with control B, we will can create a bevel like that. Okay, so maybe something around there can be good. And we will make the same kind of process here with this loop there. Control B. Nice and smooth. Same here with this too. Control B. And like this it will create something really better than before already. Now we can go there inside and create the same kind of process with Control B. Maybe a little more little that one. And now we have the overall geometry of our cup here. So if I add modifier, it will be a subdivision surface again. Now you can see the smoothing works pretty well and I can increase it and it will be perfect. Nice. So let's take it with the viewport at one. So let's say, for example, you would like some sharpness a little more here. Okay, you can notice that here we have something really smooth between the body and uh, and this part and the handle. So if you if you would like something a little less smooth, so let's say with a sharper angle, you could add just a little control air here, just a little loop there. Okay, close to the geometry, let's say, control air like that and you will have something sharper now as you can see okay so I will just keep it like it was before but uh, just for you to know so two rules that you have to make after it each modeling it and it's really important because uh, after it can create some problems into rendering or export so the first thing you have to know is that sometimes when you create an object like that with extrusions, if you make some mistakes, like for example, you make an extrude. Let's say you have this loop and you extrude it. Okay. And by mistake, you tell yourself, ah, no, it's not this I wanted to do. So you make a right click and, and you take another loop. But here, the extrusion is still here and, uh, you have double geometry there. So let's take here this edge you can see that now if i move i have double geometry and uh, this problem will cause uh, some artifacts sometimes in render or when you export it after uh, into another 3d program it can cause some problems too so the best to remove all of those vertices so here i know it was 32 vertices so i know i have 32 vertices doubles here and if I want to remove it, and this is a rule to make after each modeling to be sure you don't have any double vertices into your mesh. So you select everything, then you make a right click and uh, into the vertice mode, it will be better. Then you make a right click and you go to the merge vertices by distance. And it, for me, it did remove my 32 vertices. So now I don't have any double vertices anymore in that loop. I have only one loop. Okay. So it's very important to do it after modeling. Same thing that you have to do after each modeling. Sometimes it can happen, especially when you start with a circle, for example. Uh, tum, tum, tum. Let's go to the normals here. So sometimes it can happen that you will have something like this. Maybe let's say something like this and I will just make a uh, shift N just to show you that. Okay, good. So sometimes, and especially with shade smooth, so you can see now that I have a really strange 
uh, geometry there and when I click shade smooth on my object I have a strange artifact like here in the middle I don't know what it is so it can it can happen I did it by purpose there but it can happen that the normals of the object I are not here on the exterior of the mesh okay of the geometry here you can see that they go inside for us we would like to recalculate everything outside so we will select everything and with shift M we will just recalculate the normals okay and like this you are sure that all the normals direction are outside the mesh here and like this no problems of visualization or rendering or export so these two rules are important remove the vertices recalculate the normals and try to do it after each modeling so that's it for the cup I will save this for you so maybe we can just increase a little the viewport here to have something even better we will rename this cup for sure okay and I have saved this for you guys and in the next video we will just model an apple